Yes, it's Tuesday, the 15th of September. I will be live for the full transmission, but first, a key report from John Bowen. According to Reuters, Russia has demanded Washington restart military-to-military cooperation to avert unintended incidents near Syria at a time when U.S. officials say Moscow is building up forces to protect President Bashar al-Assad's government. Of course, Assad is backed by Russia and openly blamed by the United States for attacks on his own people, attacks that just don't add up. This is a big issue that we're facing here. And Americans have seen the lies of WMDs in Iraq. They've seen the lies that brought us to Vietnam and the Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, we've seen so many of these staged events, so many of these false flags. Now, I want to be clear as well. I believe that there was some type of chemical attack. The numbers aren't clear. The media has tried to claim already, Alex Jones says nothing happened. No, something happened in the middle of a battle zone in the capital city, uh, Damascus, of Syria. And now Assad's come out and said today, why would I attack a bunch of civilians knowing that the West has said that that's their red line a year ago to the day, that they would come and bombard us and back up the rebels? Do I want to get arrested and killed? Do I want to be thrown out of power? Do I want to see every church uh, in Syria burned to the ground because the Al-Qaeda groups Obama is supporting have said that? And I talked to a lot of special forces people on and off air. Uh, including today. And they said, yeah, none of this makes any sense. And the West is on record funding the rebels with even heavy weapons like tanks, heat seeking missiles, you name it. So this is really incredible. BBC News admits they put out a fake photo from a real massacre Saddam had been involved in from 2003. But but they, they lied and, and said these were the thousands dead from Assad when it looks like max it was 100. The Obama administration claims to be fighting ISIS, while plenty of evidence shows the Obama administration has long supported ISIS. Now the hornet's nest is stirring in Obama's inner circle. The Guardian reports Barack Obama's intelligence chief, James Clapper, is said to be in frequent and unusual contact with a military intelligence officer at the center of a growing scandal over rosy portrayals of the war against the Islamic State. James Clapper, the director of national intelligence, is said to talk nearly every day with the head of U.S. Central Command's intelligence wing, Army Brigadier General Stephen Grove, which is highly unusual, according to a former intelligence official. Grove is said to be implicated in a Pentagon inquiry into manipulated war intelligence. The Daily Beast recently reported more than 50 intelligence analysts working out of the U.S. Military Central Command have formally complained that their reports on ISIS and al-Qaeda's branch in Syria were being inappropriately altered by senior officials. One of the key aspects of the policymaking process in the United States is that analysts get to say what they think without any interference, without anybody changing it. So this is a very, very serious charge. I think it needs to be fully investigated. And if there is truth that somebody has been meddling with their analysis, I think, uh, um, I think somebody needs to lose their job over it. It appears the giant lie 9-11 victim FBI al-Qaeda expert John O'Neill tried to expose is finally caving in on itself. Now, hundreds of Iranian soldiers have been sent to Syria in an effort to help Russia defend the al-Assad government according to the Israeli media, rendering the Obama administration's sole purpose for truly being in Syria pointless. Ynet News, the English-language Israeli news website, reports that Soleimani, commander of Iran's elite Quds Force, is cooperating with Russia. An Israeli military source told Ynet, Iran's stepped-up military involvement in Syria is due to Assad's crisis and under Russian-Iranian cooperation as a result of a meeting between Soleimani with Russian President Vladimir Putin. This claim has not yet been independently verified. It's hard to forecast whether Russia's presence will decide the fate of Syria, but it will lengthen the fighting and bloodletting for at least another year because ISIS won't give up, the source said. John Bound for Infowars.com. There is a lot of things happening in the world. But if you turned on national television news here in the U.S., you would think it was Donald Trump visiting Dallas yesterday. Well, our own Joe Biggs was there covering it. And we've got some video of that with some of the highlights uh, that will be developing. Donald Trump came out and basically hammered sanctuary cities, 
hammered the fact that we're giving all this free welfare to illegals and said a lot of things that are, quite frankly, true. And he is now the major front runner, but of course, uh, Dr. Carson is a close second, so Trump's been attacking him, which will only make Carson then go up in the polls, similar to what the Democrats did attacking Trump early on, which is why Rand Paul doesn't want to be friends with the mainstream media. He wants them attacking him like he did in Kentucky. That's what got him in the Senate. And I'm oversimplifying politics here, but in this heated environment, in this world climate of political systems that we've now entered, folks want to hear it brazenly put out. They want a populist message that rings with the people. We've got a clip of Miss South Carolina blast holes through anti-gun question. When they ask her about gun violence, the answer is guns aren't committing the violence. People are. And the answer is getting mentally ill people and Folks that have been caught committing crimes, the answer is getting guns out of their hands is basically what she said. We'll put a clip coming up, and it was about education, not the gun itself. And she got a rousing applause. And the media was like, oh, it's shocking. The crowd supported her. Well, that's because the centralized government brainwashing cult system has gone too far. Because the public has been resisting its propaganda. Because the public has been saying no to this political agenda. They simply increased it two or three times what they were previously doing. And I've said over and over again, that's wonderful because that's going to backfire. If we politically expose that it's a fraud and don't go along with it. Another exciting clip I've got here that ties in uh, to Jerry Seinfeld a few months ago coming out and saying political correctness is just terrible. Many comedians I know will not go to a college now and give a uh, you know comedic uh, speech to the students, even if we're asked to go there, because we'll be demonized. My own daughter, when I said, hey, we're going to move back to New York, because you're 14 years old, there's more boys. She said, Dad, boys and girls together are sexist. Saying the word boy or girl is sexist. Well, no, see, he thought she was crazy. He thought she didn't understand liberalism and political correctness. He said, she's just ignorant and doesn't know the terms. No, your daughter's following the directives from the public school and from the private schools and from the TV and from the media. Men existing is evil. Women existing is evil. He and she existing is bad. This is a total system of ending the human community as we know it. So we'll get into that clip because now Obama has come out and slammed liberal PC culture on college campuses. He said you shouldn't be coddled and that you should read things you don't agree with and even things that are offensive. We're going to play that clip coming up. But why would he do that? Because it's creating such a giant backlash that they want to get rid of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn because it's got words from the period in it. And if you can go that far, you can ban anything. The people directing Obama have him doing this so that people go back to sleep and so that folks think, oh, see, even the president doesn't support that, so that you think it's fringe, so you think it's insane, so you think it's radical. You think it's feminazis, you think it's environmentalist wackos, all those terms that right wing talk radio taught us are very dangerous because it's scientific to break up the family. It's scientific to restrict words. It's a scientific plan to reduce the language so that it's impossible for us to ever intellectualize the predicament we're in. This is the dumbing down and the domestication. And it's just like having Joe Biden go around and say he's pro-Second Amendment 
nobody's coming after your guns. It's simply a tactic where Obama shows up to look reasonable right when they know the top is getting ready to blow off the top of the stack, right when they know that the b water is boiling over. And he says, well, here, let's play the clip in a moment, where he slams liberal PC culture on college campuses and says you shouldn't be coddled. From the idea of, oh, I've seen it, back in high school I walked into a mall bookstore and I bought Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler because I wanted to read the book written by Adolf Hitler. I wanted to see what he actually had to say. And the woman freaked out at the counter and asked me why I was reading something like this. I said, it's history, lady. And she wouldn't even have known that it was what Mein Kampf was, but Hitler was on the cover of it, had an orange cover. I bought it, it was the cheapest one they had there. They had several different ones. And she could see Hitler on the front of it. This is the just incredible ignorance that we face. But the social engineers, they know it's not ignorance on their part. They are instilling mindless ignorance. And you see it in play every day for the last six years on MSNBC, where if you oppose Obamacare, they don't intellectually argue with you on death panels or doubling and tripling prices or Gruber screwing you over, laughing at you. They look at you with a straight face and they say, why do you hate our black president? But here's Obama now playing good cop. All his surrogates, his operatives, the big foundations that created him push this agenda. He's up there to remind the old classical liberals that everything's okay. Because here's the secret. Real classical liberals, who I may agree with on some issues but disagree with on others, aren't bad people. And they're getting really, really scared. And I, I mean more modern classical liberals a Democrat of, say, the 40s or the 50s or the 60s. Misguided by major foundations, manipulated, but not a cultist, not someone that wants to burn books, not someone that wants to ban free speech. They're waking up and getting really, really upset right now about the clear tyranny they see from the Democratic Party. And that's causing an internal war within their own system. I mean, a lot of liberals were involved in social engineering because they thought it was for a greater good. But now they're going, wait a minute, we're now going to social engineer that father and mother is hurtful and that he and she is hurtful? We can't say he or she. I'm not doing that. That is total cult brainwashing. And so they back off a little bit. But as soon as opposition dies, they'll come right back in. But it's a big deal to have Obama out giving speeches like this. Here it is. Now, one thing I, I do want to point out is... It's not just sometimes folks who are mad that colleges are too liberal that have a problem. Sometimes, you know, there are folks on college campuses who are liberal and maybe even agree with me on a bunch of issues who sometimes aren't listening to the other side. And that's a problem, too. I was just talking to, to a friend of mine about this. You know, I, I've, I've heard some college campuses where... They don't want to have a guest speaker who, you know, is too conservative. Or they don't want to read a book if it has language that is offensive to African Americans or somehow sends a, a demeaning signal towards women. And, you know, I, I got to tell you, I, I don't agree with that either. You know, I, I don't agree that you, when you become students at colleges, have to be coddled and protected from different points of view. You know, it, it, I, I think that you should be able to, you know, you, you should invite anybody, you know, who, anybody who comes to speak to you and you disagree with, you should have an argument with them. But you shouldn't silence them by saying you can't come because, you know, my sense, I'm too sensitive to hear what you have to say. Um, that's not, that's not the way we learn either.
All right. So, what do you think, Arnie? Meanwhile, 